Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. In today's episode, I get to sit down with the legendary John McGaffey and uh, have a fireside chat with him, literally. It was really nice, it was really cool to meet John for the first time. Um, we got to sit down and talk about a lot of things that I'd like to talk about on my channel. Everything from technology to politics to um, you know, living abroad, a little bit about his story and all that stuff. Now, I think a lot of you guys out there know exactly who John McGaffey is. And if you don't, then uh, maybe just do a quick little Google search and um, you'll quickly find out who he is. Now, remember what we talk about here all the time. Don't always, uh, what is it? Don't always believe everything that you see and read out there. So if you do a quick Google search, all right, you know, again, take it all with a grain of salt. But regardless, He's one of those guys, you know, you can literally put him into Google and, you know, his whole life pops up. The good, the bad, the ugly. But regardless, if you guys know anything about him, you know that he is a pioneer. He is a legend. He is running for president right now in 2020. And uh, I mean, you know, again, the list goes on about how awesome this dude is. I mean, for reals. And um, we all out there have our opinions on him. And for me personally, you know, again, I'm not here to judge. You guys already know who well, you know who I am and what I'm about here on this channel. Uh, to me, it's more about uh, action speak louder than words. And this guy is a guy that takes action. You know, he is a guy that you know he put his he he literally puts his uh, money where his mouth is. All right, he goes out there and you know he's running for president, knowing fully well that he's not going to win. He's he's running for president again on principle alone to educate people. You know, he has created uh, things like a decentralized exchange, again, in order to, you know, combat the banks and combat, you know, the people that are in power right now with exactly what I tell you guys that we need to do with uh, creating creating more decentralized, uh, you know, um, exchanges and more uh, decentralization and more peer-to-peer -peer and private networks. You know, he's one of those guys. He is the guy behind McGaffey virus, uh, you know, um, thing, you know, back in the 80s, 90s and stuff. If you guys remember that far back, when you guys would buy a computer, he was the guy. Um, he was, you know, he was the guy behind, you know, McAfee. Some of you guys had Norton. Regardless, that was him. By the way, he has not been associated with McAfee for I don't know, 25 years or something like that. Uh, but regardless, that was him. He is one of the original OGs in this space when it comes to not just you know Bitcoin, but basically when it comes to privacy when it comes to the tech world and all this other stuff okay literally he is the living legend john mcgaffey so without further ado let's get to the interview i hope you guys enjoy it and uh once it's done i'll see you guys after for a few more words hi there john how's it going hey, it's going great thanks for having me on cool 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 and today we have a very special guest with us the legendary john mcgaffey some of you know him some of you don't, but we're here to skip, you know, all the pleasantries and get right to it. So um, here it is. Let's just jump right into it. John, first off, I, I have a, you know, a few questions I wanted to ask you, but one of the main questions I really wanted to ask you was, what do you think about near zero marginal cost? I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Um, we just are barely, and I, I don't, it's not an area of expertise nor an area of interest for me at the current time. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested more in, um, a little bit larger issues, you know, of, uh, the um, how cryptocurrency can free us rather than using cryptocurrency to make a quick buck. Um, you know, using our technology to free ourselves from government monitoring and control. So, but I, I don't know anything about the subject. My apologies. No, it's okay. Well, I mean, basically what near zero marginal cost is, is just a, a business term. I mean, it's, it's, you know, marginal cost, you know, just like any other business right okay so right. if you're familiar with that like um there's a, a bunch of new things out there like uh, uber facebook twitter spotify they're yes. using they're using this new um you know thing and so oh, okay all yeah, right yeah. Uh, and bitcoin, that's what you're saying right right bitcoin, <coughs> that, you know. that's great that's great that's a uh, that's certainly a, a a more power to the people you know the uh miss you know cutting out middlemen cutting out overhead cutting out unions cutting out um you know, all the things that really uh, are not necessary if human beings are open and honest with each other and their business dealings. Um, so, so yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Obviously, it's a... Yeah, you're all for it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no worries. I'll skip on to the next thing then. No worries. <coughs> okay. okay. Um, 
So, okay, so let's uh, move on to something a little closer to home. Uh, you're currently running for president uh, in 2020. Um, now, if you become president, would you help expose the truth, such as, you know, the whole sovereign citizen movement, the Fed, and so on? In fact, what do you think about sovereign citizens, you know, the whole, that whole thing? What do you think about that? Well, let's, let's start with the first question. Uh, if I were president, would I reveal? How would I know? See, here's the problem. People think presidents have power. Presidents have zero power. Do, do you know what the CIA calls presidents? Transients. You're here for four years, eight at the most, an insignificant amount of time compared to what the CIA, for example, where no one ever retires and no one ever fucking quits. And, and they are doing what they think is right for America by treating presidents like infants and idiots simultaneously with a smile, though. And so they, they control everything because presidents do not act in a vacuum. Presidents need information about world affairs in order to make a decision. Where do you think that fucking information comes from? The CIA is the sole arbiter of truth in the United States government. You want to find out about the Fed? You don't go to the Fed. You go to the CIA. You want to find out what's really happening in the IRS? You don't go to the IRS. You go to the Fed. That's what president. I mean, you go to the CIA. That's what presidents fucking do. Um, and as such, they are the Praetorian Guard that, that was created. Um, by, I think, Tiberius Caesar in order to protect him from his friends and family because all Roman emperors have been whacked either by a close friend or their wife or their mother or their brother or sister or their father. None of them died naturally and none of them died at a stranger's hands. So Tiberius, smart motherfucker that he was, he goes, all right, I think I've got to figure it out. I'm taking the best of the best of the best of my um, Roman legion, most trustworthy, the strongest, the most fucking feared. I'm going to take 112 of those and surround myself with them wherever I go. And in fact, I may not go anywhere because why should I go? 75% of prior Caesars have been whacked when they're outside the house. Only 25% inside. And Tiberius, knowing how to add two and two, goes, uh huh. So Tiberius hardly ever went anywhere, kept the Praetorian Guard around him, and then suddenly the Praetorian Guard got the, the, the true meaning of their position because you could not talk directly to the Caesar unless you were frisked and anal searched or whatever because you might have a weapon. Or whatever. I don't care if it's your wife. Your mother, your brother, or father. No, you fucking strip search. So, what happened is the only people who really saw the Caesar were the people he was fucking men, women, dogs, chickens, whatever, um, and the Praetorian Guard. And so, he would tell the chief of the Praetorian Guard, um, tell the Senate that I, uh, if I want them to do plan A, is that a plan B? Yes, temporary. Go to the Senate and go, the Caesar wants plan B and not plan A because plan B is not what the Praetorian Guard fucking wants, all right? And so, now it can't be that overt, but all the private fucking communications. And so finally, they were the real, the Praetorian Guard ruled Rome for a hundred fucking years. Claudius, smart motherfucker he was, he looked stupid, but he was very smart, he goes, whoa, and did everything they told him. They said, go here, we went there. Go there, went there. And the Praetorian Guard killed Tiberius, okay, so that Claudius could come in. Because Tiberius wasn't stupid. You know, he saw what had happened, and he's still a feisty old man. So they just killed him. Claudius was a young man. He stuttered, and everybody thought he was an idiot, and therefore, he put that idiot in, and let's not worry about it anymore. That's what's happened to our government people, our president. And the um, Congress senators were all briefed by the CIA. All. And, and the CIA accounts for 95% of their knowledge 
And that knowledge is, is selectively placed by the puppet masters within the CIA. Anyway. All right, all right. And uh, I, I guess, you know, just to follow up on that, who do you think are these masters, these uh, puppet masters giving these uh, orders from above? I mean, you know, we all have our the theories. CIA, the CIA, all right, the CIA. Well, let's, well, let's, give, an, let's give an example, okay? Now, yeah. the CIA seldom. And who are they? Well, it's the organization. Who knows what the real fucking structure is? Because only they do. But it's them, okay? And, and they're not they are not evil people. They're patriots, all of them. They're thinking they're doing the best for the country by not allowing idiots to have anything to do with it. Those idiots being presidents and congressmen. And I, I'm going to be frank with you to a certain extent. They're right. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, However, yeah. I didn't vote them into power to do this. This is what's happened, people. Because how do I know that my what's in the national interest is really in the national interest in the, in the minds of the people. I mean, the CIA might have a thousand year plan where three times getting there, we've got to wipe out 90% of the American population. We don't fucking know, but we need to. And that's the problem. But you know, like that actually makes more sense, you know, having like all of these people just fighting for power, <coughs> you know, all these people. <laughs> but let me give you a concrete example yeah, yeah. of how they work. They seldom lie, but when they do, they save it for a big one. Why? Because when they lie, they've got to find the scapegoat, someone that, oh, this is why we thought this, and then execute him publicly in some basement where only the senators watch. I don't fucking know, but here's how it works. Um, it, just prior to the second Gulf War, the Iraq was gaining power. And that was imbalancing the region according to what the CIA wanted. You think the CIA just operates in America? Fuck me, no. Right. So they literally, and I know many people within the CIA, and I talk to some of them sometimes daily, so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And these people call, by the way, presidents transient. Right? So, um, so anyway, they, some transient comes into power. And be, by the way, so they need Iraq. And neutralized, they think well, let's uh, let's assassinate um, the head of Iraq, and they go, no, nah, it's going to replace him. Please God! And so someone says, all right, we've got no choice. Let's bomb them into the Stone Age. Everybody votes. Go, all right, bomb in the Stone Age, uh, Frank. Uh, the you know, and Harry, you know the president really well. Go make it happen. So they go to the president. They go, Mr. President, um, I regret to have to say this, but we have this government. 100 certainty that Iraq has nuclear weapons and missiles capable of delivering them to our closest allies, even in. Now, Mr. President, I, I'm not here to advise you, and, and I, I would never presume to. And in fact, I am glad, Mr. President, that this decision is on your shoulders and not mine. And I will leave you with that. And I know you. What choice does he fucking have? He knows now with 100% certainty this country, the biggest problem he has now has nuclear weapons and ballistic fucking missiles. Bomb them into the Stone Age. Now, afterwards, of course, there were no weapons of mass destruction. They were never found. They were never there. Everybody knew it except the president and Congress. The rest of the world knew. Even the American fucking citizens knew. Did the president know? Fuck no. Why? He's got the CIA up his ass, and so he's being advised. So this is how they work. That's just one example. There are thousands of people. This is the truth of it. The CIA runs America. Who is the people? Who fucking knows who really runs the CIA? It certainly is not the head of the CIA as mm -hmm. just designated by the president. This much we know. I mean, you know, it makes a lot of sense. At the end of the day, it's just, you know, these puppets are put into position and then they're overwhelmed with all this stuff. And then it's like anything else. You know, they quickly realize that, like, uh, you know, everybody's just fighting for power. Everybody's just power hungry, right? Abs absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's kind of like what's going on. It's like all that bureaucracy and all that growth just makes everything even more convoluted. And uh, nobody even knows what's really going on, like you said, but they just know that they got to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, everybody picks their teams and they go at it. And, uh, yeah, man, unfortunately, uh, that was the fall of Rome, and uh, now we're seeing, uh, you know, the same thing happening in the U.S., and it kind of, you know, it kind of sucks. Absolutely. It kind of sucks from an American Absolutely. perspective, but, you know. But anyways, let's move on to 
thing. Let's move on to something a little bit more positive, uh, something that you're doing, which is uh, your decentralized uh, exchange. You know, uh, can we, you know, can you tell more people about it? Because I have a lot of people on my channel, again, that are also getting exposed to Bitcoin, you know, for the first time. And, uh, you know, a lot of them, you know, they buy Bitcoin, like, let's say on the Cash App or, or some Coinbase. But eventually, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, they realize that, like, um, they don't want to be doing KYC. They don't want to be, you know, they're trying to escape the, the government's clutches. So they asked me, hey, what, what else, uh, what other options are out there? And, uh, you know, basically outside of uh, buying uh, Bitcoin at, a, at an ATM, right, um, there's no KYC. You know, sometimes it's a little hard. It's basically pretty hard for, for newbies to jump on. So can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your, your exchange? Yeah, so I, I've been talking for three years uh, at every crypto conference. And up until recently, I did at least six a year all around the world. Um, sometimes 10 a year, and on my Twitter account and through writing and videos, been saying the same thing that if we don't have truly usable decentralized exchanges, the government will shut us down. Now, that doesn't mean that cryptocurrency is dead. No, it means that the cryptocurrencies developed by governments will be the only ones allowed. And those are not going to free us, I fucking promise you. So, no. We have to have exchanges that can't be shut down and that are completely decentralized, meaning nobody has any control. Now, we've built this exchange, and it's up and running. Now, you can add, for example, a token you know, by simply pushing a button, you know, hit the key at the top of the page, input the technical specs, and it's there. Um, you, know, you don't have to pay a penny. Um, we take no information, no name, address, phone number, or email, nothing. There's nothing required. Just log on and flow through. Now, I have done this in spite of already being wanted by the IRS and the SEC. In spite of that, let's fuck you people. Come and find me. All right? If you want to do something, but even if you find me, I can no longer help you. It's on. I chose like if I, I chose a distributed architecture. Yeah, even even if they track uh, you down, they can't shut it down. They're, that's it. They can't shut right, it down. Right. I, I chose a decentralized distributed right. architecture where all of the logic is in smart contracts on the blockchains. They're there. Try and take them down, SEC. I'm fucking sorry. They go, well, we're going to take your McAfee.com domain. I go, oh, I shit. We already have 30 different portals in 30 different countries. Uh, so I could give a flying fuck what you do. It's not going to change the fact that it's there forever. Now, you know this is not something they're going to let slide, people. I mean, they're going to come after me even worse than they are. And we're already in hiding five months. We haven't even told our closest friends or relatives, not a single person, not mom, dad, brother, sisters, nobody, where we are, because we can't. You know, after our deal in the Caribbean, you know, being um, almost collected in the Bahamas, thrown out of Cuba, not really, but they told us, you know, listen, the American government has asked us to return you to America. We told them. <laughs> we, told them we told them. We told them. Uh, we would think about it for a few days and get back to them. So that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty crazy. Uh, you, you, you would think in Cuba it would be the only place, right? You'd be safe. Well, yes, but you know what? I mean, the U.S. had warships off the fucking yeah, coast yeah, at the yeah. time, you remember? Yeah, I mean, I visited. Ago, I, visited. I've been, I, I was out there. Oh, yeah, I was out there a few months ago, and uh, yeah, it was pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Fuck <laughs> me. Five months ago, there were fucking American warships. Not because of me, I hope, but they were there. <laughs> so, so anyway, they said, so, Mr. Mackley, we would vastly prefer if you would leave our country within 72 hours and not return. I go, God, thank you. So seriously, thank you. <laughs> we hopped in the boat, took us two days to get, we were sweating it. And they came by every day saying, Miss McCree, are you sure you'll be out of here within 51 hours? I'm going, if I have to swim to Haiti, I will be out of here. All right, so. <laughs> so anyway, we were out of there. Um, took us four and a half days to the Dominican Republic. I chose the Dominican Republic because I thought the CIA would not expect me there, therefore would not anticipate me, and therefore would not be prepared for me. All this fucking wrong. Four and a half days, it's say we pull into port, and we are surrounded by soldiers with weapons. Um, 
and they are not pleasant. Um, they refuse to let us talk to customs. I had all of our weapons laid out on the table, waiting, waiting for customs. That's what you always do. Come in, tell customs you got weapons. They do one of two things. They tell you, don't take them off the boat while you're here. Or they say, give them to us. We'll give them back when you leave. Cuba was one of those, give them to us. We'll give them back when you leave, which they did. Um, and, and so on. But in any case, we're surrounded by soldiers. We're arrested and charged with refusal to declare to customs. And we have it on tape. And they even have it. See how stupid it is. They thought it was a slam dunk. They were videoing the whole thing, those idiots. All right, so now, um, and, and so they're videoing me saying, I haven't spoken to customs. I want to talk to customs. I'm not in your country until customs and immigration have allowed me in. You're on my boat fucking illegally. I demand immigration and customs. No. So we were charged with failure to declare to customs, obviously, because we didn't. Um, and um, so, uh, anyway, it's a long fucking story. But four days later, because I, this is not my first fucking rodeo, I promise you that. Uh, so the CIA's got me there, but still, I'm not in America. I'm in the Dominican Republic. You have to act underground, and I can act overtly. Um, I have the advantage. I got us out of the country to England five months ago. We decided to stop running and to go underground. And the running part is, is we've been doing for years. You know, we have to live in one place for a while, I have to move on. Um, and uh, but we're underground now. So yeah, I mean, relaxing. I, I, I don't worry about any. It's great. It's just the greatest feeling. Janice and I are just as happy as we have ever been. I mean, I, I was surprised to hear a few years ago when when you were still living in the U.S. You know, I was actually was like, man, what the hell is he doing there? I, I thought you were, you know, after the whole Belize thing, I thought you were out of the country because look, when I left the U.S. Like, I'm here in Mexico. I don't want to go back, you know? Like, yeah, well, the last you place know, I want to go but back. I mean, yeah. but, but hang on. Keep in mind the circumstances under which I went back. Right, right. Mexico, Panama, Guatemala, Belize, all wanted my sorry ass. Where am I going to go? Back home, where I know everything and I know the laws and I know what can and cannot happen, even though my rights have been diminished. I function well in a society and in many others. I can't ever go to Mexico, dude. Whoa. Or <laughs> uh, well, Guatemala, anywhere in Central America. I now can't go either to the Bahamas, Cuba, or the Dominican fucking Republic. Wow. Wow. So, right? That, that's, that's crazy, man. So the me, list of yeah. countries, the list of countries that have banned John McAfee yeah. have escalated recently. <laughs> man, you might end up in Russia before so. you know it. Uh, you and Snowden. <laughs> uh, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be hanging out with Snowden that's before you know it. The weirdest fucking thing is that the Russians have invited me more times than I can <laughs> count, and I tell them all the same thing. Um, I said, I, I don't trust you people. And they go, please, you went to China, and China is more communist than, than we ever were. I go, yes. When the Chinese tell me, Mr. McPhee, from the time you get off the plane till you get back on the plane, we promise you nothing's going to happen to you, and if you will, we will put you back on the plane. When you people tell me that, my mind goes to, yeah, but you know what? I'll break my leg. Something probably will miss the goddamn plane. Uh, and then I'll be hospitalized or something. And yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah. grilled by all of your tech specialists going, what do you know, Mr. McAfee, that can help us? So, and, and they laugh at that. Yeah, they actually, all do. They, yeah, they'll, they'll um, actually give you a real heart attack. You don't have to fake it. <laughs> yeah, no, that, absolutely. I wouldn't have to fake that fucker. So, um... <laughs> So good God almighty, uh, the Russians scare me. Although oh, okay. some of my best friends are Russian. Now listen, the Russians are the closest to Americans that you can ever fucking get. Really, we yeah. are the same people. The sort of languages are so violently different and almost impossible to grasp. That things like humor, we can't quite do, but still, they're just like Americans. It's just they have lived in a ruthless fucking country since 1917. 1917, yeah, ruthless and brutal beyond description. And so there are Americans who are just a lot fucking tougher and a lot fucking meaner. I do recognize this and I acknowledge it. I, you know, I, I like to know my yeah. friends and, yeah, and yeah, my yeah. friends who are Russian, I, I, I know what my limits are with them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, I used to like be like you, like a little bit more afraid of Russia. But you know, the the longer I've been kind of like I guess exposed to a lot of the truths of the U.S., uh, it's like I, you know I, I respect Russia, but I don't know. I'm a little bit more enamored by their culture and them and, and all that stuff. And uh, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm like a Russian asset, you know. But I, I'm I American. I'm, I'm American all day. You know what I mean? Like I, you I, know, I I'm a patriot. Right. Like, I'm a patriot like you, but at the end of the day, you know, we're, you know, we're forced to be out of our country for whatever reason, you know, but. I understand. All right. Well, listen, we're, we're, we're out of time. I have time for one more question. Why don't you pick one and I'll answer it. And and then uh, if you want to ever reschedule, I'd be happy to do that. Actually, um, I, I think that, that about covers it. I mean, I had a bunch of All questions. Right. Well, I thank you exchange. very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's it. I mean, I just want to say thank All you. Right. It, was, it was beautiful meeting you. You're and, very uh, welcome. And thank you so okay. much for joining us. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, man. Well, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed that because I really, really enjoyed it. In fact, I enjoyed it more than what I thought. Um, when I first went into that interview, <clears throat> I just thought that I was going to conduct an interview. I've done several things like this before in the tech space, um, mainly in the tech space. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes it's a little bit intimidating. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, a little nerve wracking going live with, you know, it, it's, it's all those things. You know, one thing is creating videos for my YouTube. And another thing is actually, you know, being interviewed or interviewing or doing things of that ilk. You know, again, I've done things, uh, you guys can scour my channel, you know, whether I've done things with my Russian comrades over there uh, talking about blockchain or I've talked with Naomi, you know, Brockwell and others. Um, you know, I've done a few of these before, but, you know, before I went into the today's, uh, little uh what is it interview with uh with john um actually you know i was going through the same things but a few seconds after just talking to him before we even got started i was i just felt at ease you know this guy was wow you know what i mean like amazing now you know it's not to say that um you know we all have our opinions on everything we're not going to agree on everything we don't i mean even with you guys we know we don't agree on everything i mean come on uh, I, I don't agree i mean you know me all right this is, uh, but regardless uh he was a guy that I, had, I could have a you know pretty easy conversation with you know before and after it actually went really really well um i'm looking forward to being able to interview him again and talk to him again and bring you more insight from him and um again it was just really really cool to be able to you know not just sit there and uh interview him but basically have a chat with him because that's kind of what it was you know what it turned into and um and i'm really glad for that because again um sometimes these things could be a little difficult because you know it gets a little stiff um you know some of the people are a little bit you know like the whole professionalism thing and just you know all this stuff you know everyone's just trying to do their job but basically when i was chatting with him it was just like chatting with you guys just like chatting with a friend or or anything like that so it, it was really awesome it was a pleasure it, it was um, yeah I, I just I um, was very honored to be able to sit down and not just talk to him but be able to record it and bring it to you guys so anyways guys with that being said that's it we're at the end of the episode I really 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 hope that you guys enjoyed today's content and you guys enjoyed today's video um, you guys already know I do all kinds of stuff on this channel but sometimes hey I bring you guys little nuggets of awesomeness like this and this is not just uh, you know again as you guys know um, you guys are watching this in a premiere we're not you know I wasn't doing this as a regular upload because again I wanted to share this with you guys immediately after I was able to you know conduct the interview which I just finished again a few minutes ago I'm about to edit this and I'm about to upload it and we're gonna and we're watching this together tonight or maybe you're watching this a few days later but regardless it was uh, really awesome you know to be able to do these kind of things for you guys and for all of us together and uh, I really hope that you guys have a little bit more insight on Mr. John McGaffey. You guys, uh, if you guys don't know who he is, you have a little bit more knowledge on who he is, and maybe you do a little research on, he, on, on him. And for those of you guys that do know who he is, well, you guys already know what's up. That's right. I got to talk to the living legend himself, and uh, man, it was awesome. All right, guys. Well, I got to get going. I got to edit this thing, and I got to upload it. So, guys, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. Please check out all the links below so you can follow me on discord follow me on all the social medias you know find my website and and all the other awesome things that i have here for you guys okay and uh more importantly than anything else hey guys i'll see you tomorrow for another awesome episode you already know the deal thanks again for watching and i'll uh, see you guys manana peace